Question three is, can my virtual conditions be the same diameter for a shaft, a boss, and a bore for the actual part? So we have an assembly here, that same part we were just talking about. And now we've added this little pulley. So now we have an assembly, right? We know this part assembles to this pulley. Well, if we're going to try and do some sort of calculation to make sure that when we bolt these together, this bore, or sorry, this boss is not going to interfere with this bore. There's not going to be any sort of, uh, if we do a cross section of the pulley and we bring this part in, is it going to interfere at all with the part below? Is it going to interfere? Well, what you do is use a virtual condition to ensure you have some sort of clearance, whether it's zero clearance, um, interference fit, or whatever sort of fit you want to do, you're using virtual condition to understand the amount of clearance that you could have or not have at worst case scenario. So we're going to walk through this example together. First, we'll go through the virtual condition of this part, and then we'll go through the virtual condition of this part, and then discuss how we can we can confidently say there will be no interference possible if we pass each of these parts individually. So we analyze the drawing again. We have datum A is still this plane down here. Datum B is going to be the bolt pattern as we just discussed. And the feature we're considering making sure clears in the assembly is this 2.49 plus or minus five thousands held to a position of five thousands at MMC with re reference to datums A and B. So the short answer is yes, by comparing virtual conditions of mating features, this will help you understand the potential fit of this assembly. So they can be the same. If they are the same, that's essentially saying we have a zero clearance fit. At the worst case scenario, you will have zero clearance. If the worst case position comes in or perpendicularity comes in here, we will still have zero clearance. It'll perfect. It'll fit right up to each other. And same with the mating part. If we have air in this bore, the mating part will still work. And we'll show you that here. Get rid of my scribbles. <clears throat> For those of you that need a quick refresher, um, we're not going to go in depth on virtual condition. This will be more of a kind of a review, but virtual condition is a boundary that's defined by the size of the feature and the geometric tolerances of that feature. So when these two are combined, they create this virtual condition, this boundary or envelope that the surface of that feature will never cross. No element of this feature, this bore, I'm sorry, this boss, no element of this boss will ever deviate outside of this green envelope. If it does, it's a failing, it, that feature failed, and this should be a failing part, should be rejected. So this is the theoretical boundary we can calculate using virtual condition equations. Now, the virtual condition of this feature, since it's an external feature, we know the virtual condition of any external feature is going to be the MMC size plus any geometric tolerance. So let's look at the size dimension here. We know that every feature of size has an MMC and an LMC state, right? The, they're just the limits of size that are allowed. So let's go ahead and write down what MMC is here and LMC. Well, for an external feature, we know that MMC is going to be the condition at which that feature exists with the maximum amount of material involved. So that means it's the largest size. So the largest size that this could be is 2.49 plus or minus 5,000. So we know we're going to go 2.49 plus 5,000. So our MMC is going to be 2.495. And the LMC, just to make things round, we're going to show is 2.485. So it's going to be 2.49 minus 5,000. So we know our MMC and LMC states for this feature of size right here. Well, we go back to our equation. We know that the MM, the virtual condition for an external feature is going to be the MMC plus the geometric tolerance. Well, the geometric tolerance is 5,000. Even if we have this modifier in here, what does this feature control frame tell us? 
Well, it's saying at position, the position of this feature has a 5,000th tolerance zone when measures when it measures at MMC with respect to A dash or A and B. Well, we just said if this measures at MMC, that's our virtual condition, and the geometric tolerance at that condition is 0 0.005. That's what our feature control frame is telling us. At it, when it measures at MMC, you only get five. So there's no bonus involved here when we're trying to calculate virtual condition. So what we get to do is we add MMC and the geometric tolerance. So 2.495 plus 5 thousandths geometric tolerance, that positional geometric tolerance, and it gives us a virtual condition of 2.5. Everybody see that? So we can calculate the virtual condition of this feature with respect to the DRF, the datum reference frame. So that's one half of the problem here. So the other half is going and calculating the virtual condition of the mating part. So let's do that. Here we have this pulley, and we're checking the virtual condition of this mating part. So let's start again identifying the feature we're concerned with, which is this ID, the bore now, defined by this size dimension and position control back to A, B. Well, we know A is going to be this surface here based off the leader arrow. So it's going to be this kind of top surface here is datum A. And datum B, again, is going to be the bolt pattern, but in this case, it's a tapped bolt pattern, tapped hole. And so we're locating this inner diameter with respect to A then B. So let's go ahead and calculate the virtual condition of this ID. And again, we just use our virtual condition equations for an internal feature, the MMC minus the geometric tolerance, right? Because we're going to be, the uh, envelope will be inside that hole, right? So again, come in here, identify your MMC and your LMC states. MMC, LMC, MMC for an interior hole, an inside diameter and uh, internal feature is going to be the smallest diameter, right? So we're going to be 2.51 minus the, uh, so sorry, the MMC. MMC is going to be 2.51 minus 5,000, so 2.505 and our LMC is going to be the largest diameter and again we're not using LMC but I find it handy to write down both feet both both states because every feature size has an MMC maximum material condition and an LMC least material condition so the LMC here is going to be the largest diameter 2.515 we take the MMC and plug it into our equation and we get MMC minus geotol, so 2.505 minus that geometric tolerance, which is here, right? And again, at MMC, we only get 5,000, so our geometric tolerance is 5,000. And we know that our virtual condition also for this feature is 2.5. So as we saw previously, the mating part's virtual condition is 2.5. This part's condition is 2.5. And we know that no element of this inside diameter can deviate beyond this envelope. This is the worst case, worst case um, boundary. This isn't the worst case size. Don't confuse this with size. We're not saying if this diameter measures at 2.5, it passes, right? It's going to fail. If the diameter measures at 2.5, it fails. What this is, is a boundary that takes into account both size being at its worst case scenario and the position being at its worst case scenario. It's combining them and creating this theoretical boundary that we can confidently say no element will pass regardless of its orientation, position, or size. Does everybody see that? We're not saying here this di inside diameter can measure at 2.5 and nothing worse. We're saying no, size still has to fall inside our size limits, inside our MMC and LMC, we have to do the two point check and an envelope check. And we also have check position. But if both of those checks are at their worst case scenario, this is the boundary it will never cross. This is the worst case boundary. So if we take into that into consideration for both features, both parts, 
virtual condition for the ID, virtual condition for the OD, right? And we know that we're locking because of the datums line up. There we used mating features. That's why it's so important to check uh, or use appropriate datums, is because we can now say that if the datums are set up appropriately, the virtual condition of this blue part and the virtual condition of this gray part line up perfectly on each other. So if you zoom in on it, this feature will never cross the boundary. This feature will never cross this boundary. Same thing on the other side of the diameter. These parts, regardless of their orientation, form, or location, as long as they pass their checks of position, in this case, they will never deviate beyond that virtual condition. You will always have, at best, or at worst, however you want to look at it, a zero clearance condition. Now, if you want to ensure a little bit more room, if you have some sort of, um, you have to have a clearance calculation here where you maybe need oil or some sort of lubrication in there, and you want to know at least a minimum distance here will always be met. Well, what you have to do is design that, ca that calculated clearance into your virtual condition. So you would either need to grow this diameter or shrink this diameter to, to change your virtual condition condition values here to have a gap between these two virtual conditions if you're the designer and you want to add a designed clearance not a zero clearance you can increase those values or decrease them appropriately depending on which part you can change maybe you're buying the pulley and you don't have control over that but you manufacturing this boss you can control and shrink that diameter so your virtual condition changes Excuse me. <clears throat> so on the flip side, you can also handle that if you need a interference or a um, press fit, or maybe you do um, some sort of, you heat up a bearing and you have to make sure that there's some sort of um, interference fit. You can change these two values and make sure that there's some sort of interference fit. Oops, excuse me. Any questions on that? So again, we're using the virtual conditions <clears throat> of both of these parts to understand what sort of clearance we have at the end of the day. So short answer, yes, you can have virtual conditions of a bore and a boss be the same. Essentially, you're saying there's zero clearance at worst case scenario. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes download helpful charts, and access articles written by training experts.